Welcome to Fear Not, Yoga with Claire Hartley. So uh, I think it's the, the um, Christopher Isherwood uh, translation of the Yoga Sutras. Uh, and the Christopher Isherwood was, um, uh, he worked with a Swami, um, I think in the 60s, to translate the Yoga Sutras. He was the writer that wrote Cabaret. And he wrote other books as well, but that's kind of his, probably what he's most, was most famous for. So he was very interested in the, in the nature of the universe as a lot of artists, most artists are. Um, and he got with this really groovy Indian Swami uh, and started to delve into what yoga was and the Yoga Sutras. And I, um, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but not. But the, the, uh, the beginning of it is that number two, they've just put, um, yoga is controlling the ups and downs of your mind. And when you just sort of read it like that, you go, who wouldn't want that? And again, when you read it like that, you go, why isn't everybody interested in this? Controlling the ups and downs of your mind. What makes us suffer? The ups and downs of our mind. Like, that's it. That's it. Like, uh, us, very lucky here in LA. Like, what, what is really making us suffer? Very little, as in real physical evidence in our life, right? And we're not dodging bullets out there. Like we have, um, at this moment, we're really, um, we're graced, right, with some peace. And then the question is, is what do we do with that peace? We take it for granted most of the time, right, until we pick up a newspaper and hopefully we have a moment of realizing how uh, lucky we are to have this peace <coughs> within our society at this moment. And hopefully we'll sustain it and grow it. But how do we sustain it and grow it? It's to take individual account accountability to control our ups and downs of our mind. Because when we don't, and if you have no inclination that that's the nature of evolving, then we see other parts of the world where that has gone completely off kilter. And people drop bombs on each other. People dropping bombs on each other, right, in Syria and Aleppo, what's happening right now, is a complete lack of practice of controlling the ups and downs of the mind, right? That's it gone to its 100th degree, right, where violence becomes an acceptable way to live the life, right? So yoga is controlling. So are anchoring in with peace today, and as we move, is helping anchor, uh, perhaps b birthing, I'm gonna say birthing a new reality that we've all been doing together, right, for quite some time. I'm gonna spread that a little today. So let's take our palms to prayer. So what does it mean? It means that when you're out there walking around today, right, your practice will be you find a thought that's jarring, that creates that knot, that bubble up of fear or dissatisfaction, that instead of either looking for excuses of why you feel that way and justifying it, you just simply observe the thought that brought that feeling up. That's it. Right? We don't really even have to do anything with it. It's an observation of the thoughts. Let's take a deep breath in. Inhale. One more of those breaths. Three arms.
deep breath in. And exhale, bow your head to your inner teacher. Bow inward. Mm -hmm. And let's inhale, lift the chin, release the arms, open the eyes. Let's come off our blankets. Come up on your knees, tuck your toes behind you so you're, you've got a, a flexion on your toes and sit on your heels for a moment. Yeah, let's take a breath here through the feet. So you'll let the observation of the mind stuff, the ups and downs, start here. Right? Now, if there's discomfort, there's discomfort. And that arises and moves through the body. When we attach to the thought of discomfort, it triggers thought patterns that start to go to all the places and times we've been really uncomfortable. And sometimes the, the discomfort and the thoughts as they come together actually um, then signal it as pain. Now, pain is immediate, right? You go into something, it's like Phew! The body immediately has that reaction. It's different when we go in there and it starts to turn into pain because of the thoughts. So you take a breath, right? and you isolate a little bit, just the feeling of discomfort from the thought. Take a big, big inhale. We're going to take the fingers over, and then come take the fingers to place right in front. That's it, towards the knees. And let's do a little wrist flexion here. So you can rock back if your arms are super straight, right, with the palms flat. If they're not right, you've got really stiff wrists, just stay static. If you do rock, try and get and flatten out as much of the fingertips on the ground and push the heel of the hand down more. Don't let that heel of the hand come off at all if you're flexing back. If it does, you've gone too far. I'm gonna take a breath, another one here, inhale. And then exhale, cross your shins. You're gonna come up over, or you can bring the legs back around the side and bring the feet out in front of you as wide as your mat. Take your fingertips, palms flat, and prop yourself up pretty tall. Right? And then we're just going to take a little um, rolling side to side, kind of like windshield wipers with the legs. So we go internal, external rotation as we just drop one knee over the knees, over from side to side. That's it. So notice any sticky parts, right? within the rotation of the leg and the hip. That's it. Good. But on the floor, try and keep your sit bones, you know, planted. Good. Inhale, come back to center. Cross your shins, come back over, and come sit again on those feet. Yeah. All right, you're going to take a breath. Inhale, squeeze the thighs. Yeah, isolate a little the softness of the face and the breath. So we're gonna take the hands now and take the top of the hands to the ground. Bring it out in front, top of the hands to the ground, fingertips pointing towards your knees. Keep your toes tucked under because this will help lessen the load on the wrists, especially if you've got very stiff wrists. And then just work on straight arms. Don't rock until the arms are straight. Yes. And then when they're straight, yeah, you can put a little, a little deeper flexion in them. Good. Take about three more. So those of you who've been doing this a little while with me, these wrist stretches, you can start to load a little more weight on top of them, right? So you push down a little bit more and bring your weight over them a little more. And then let's exhale, release that. And we're going to come back over again and cross your shins. Come sit on your sit bones. Again, take the feet out in front, but bring them hip distance apart. Bring them a little further out in front. We'll come to tabletop, fingertips behind. Press your shoulder blades really deeply together. Hollow out the belly a lot. Firm your buttocks and inhale. Come on up. So stretch, open the front of the chest. A little arm extension. So as you use your heels, you're going to take the heels so you firm the buttock right? and then draw the belly in and try and press down a little bit more through all the fingers and the heel of the hand. Big inhale here, inhale, and then exhale. Good, release. We're going to come over. So cross your shins the opposite way that you did last time to see if you can roll over the knees and then come back all fours. We're back to hands and knees now, tabletop. So working a little more on the shoulder blades. So as you cat your pose, right, as you round, really push the shoulder blades away from each other as wide apart as you can. And as you cow the pose, as you come to that arch, 
push your shoulder blades as close together as you can. So you retract and keep the arms straight. And then as you push the floor away and round your upper back, protract by bringing the shoulder blades wide apart and hug up your belly. And then retract with the arms straight. So you start to get some facility in those shoulder blades that you can pull them apart when needed be, and you can pull them together, right, when we come up to those straight arm back bends, which is what we have to do with those shoulder blades. Good, another couple, really hug in that belly. And then use your fingertips, keep the arms straight as you retract, pull the shoulder blades together, chest up. Last one, exhale, protract really strongly, squeeze the belly in. Inhale, straight arms, chest through, retract shoulder blades together. And then put a little neutral spine in here. Walk your hands so they're out in front slightly. Grab your mat, tuck your toes, and with the mat in your hand, downward facing dog, and reach back. As you reach back, just walk out the heels a little. So press one heel down a little more than the other, and then shift the sides, yeah. And so by grabbing hold of those outer edges of the mat, there's no pressure on the wrists right now. Yeah, we're gonna give them just a little break, and then find your breath, your ujjaya pranayama. Bring it in so that it has, um, yes, there's some texture right there as you breathe. You can feel a little swirl in the back of your throat. Yeah, it's got the ha sound behind it. And then draw your heels to the ground for a breath. And then inhale, lift your heels up. And bring them down, exhale. Good, three more, just up and down, keeping the legs straight now, up and down with the heels as high as you can, off the ground and as low to the ground as you can. Yeah, it's good to get that Achilles and those tendons by the heel. Give them a little mobility, stretch them out. Nice, deep inhale. As you exhale, heels down, press them down as much as you can, as firm into the earth. And then start to walk your hands back to your feet. Walk to the back of the mat, walk to the back. Good, as soon as you can, get those heels on the ground. Yes, and then walk back a little bit more. If your fingers don't touch the ground, bend the knees, drop your head and let gravity take some of the spine down. Open and shut the mouth wide a couple of times. Perhaps even shake the head side to side. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, good. So starting off our week with a clean slate. So coming to a place where we're gonna accept some emptiness. We don't need to fill up with anything that actually there's a peeling away to reveal what's left rather than grabbing anything from the outside. That's the practice. Lift your chin, come up on your fingertips, look up halfway, and then exhale, fold a little deeper. And inhale, lift the chin, sweep the arms up, come up. Exhale, arms down, good. So shoulder extension, we're gonna take the arms behind, interlace your fingers into a fist. Without moving the torso, so let's really get our Tadasana torso, wrap your abdominal muscles in, take those back, uh, the side waist and draw it back. Holding that steady, reach the arms back and try and get the arms as high as you possibly can. Yet without pitching the chest forward without bending or flexing the spine in any way. Yeah, I'm gonna go up, there you go. Hold that steady, good, good. Inhale, and then exhale, release that down. Just send the arms up overhead, Urdhva Hastasana, Intadasana. Stretch the waist up, exhale, arms down. And then interlace your fingers, opposite thumb on top, so whatever you did that feels unnatural now, go into that and then reach the arms up without pitching the chest forward and get them up as high as you can. Let's just hold them there. Yeah. So we'll have some scar tissue, not really scar, some of it can be scar tissue, but the, the fascia can get really um, sticky, right, around the pecs because of all that forward folding. So you have to just kind of load it up for a minute. It takes 
apparently, it can take six to seven months for us to adapt to a new shape. So don't worry if you come in six to seven months. Okay, so that's, you know, decent amount of time. Exhale, release down. Good. Inhale, reach the arms up. And then fold, exhale. And take your time. Walk forward into downward facing dog. No rush, walk forward, walk forward, walk forward, yes. Good, spread your fingers. Take that inhale, open the mouth, exhale. Inhale forward to plank, come to the top of a push up. Exhale, drop your knees to the ground, come all the way down. Okay, so inhale, baby cobra. Come to that cobra pose. Press down through the tops of the feet. And then think about your shoulder blades coming really close together as you isometrically pull your palms back. Now draw your mid-buttock flesh. Really draw that buttock flesh down strongly to protect your lower back. Really nice. As you exhale, release, press up. Come to the knees, downward facing dog. Exhale, let's take three breaths. <sighs> yeah. So adaptation, about six to seven months to really adapt and to change the structure of that stickiness if you work into it consistently. Right? And so that, I think, helps us have some patience. Or maybe not. Maybe it just made you want to run out of the room. I don't know. <laughs> Inhale. As you exhale, look forward, step or float the feet up to the front of the mat. Feet together, lift the chest, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms up, sweep the arms up. Straight back down. As you exhale, forward, fold, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, lift the chest, look up. Exhale, step back, plank pose, either to the ground or your Chaturanga Dandasana. Go forward and down. Take your time, if you're coming to upward facing dog now, to straighten the arms, to take the outer arms back behind the chest, to press the shoulder blades towards each other. And then exhale, over those toes, put that little hollow body in, downward facing dog, good. Yeah. So let's put that same amount of time on the mind. So if you're just working with witnessing the thoughts, and month after month right now, you find yourself going back into that hole of negative fear thinking, and maybe you've only caught one or two thoughts and examined it, and think, is that really mine? Is that really helpful? That's good progress, right? One or two, it's good progress. We've created a whole lifetime of this fear-based thinking. It'll take a little while to, to watch it, transform it. Gaze forward as you exhale, step or float the feet up to the front of the mat. Inhale, lift the chest, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Let's take the palms to prayer. Exhale, bend the knees, Utkatasana, sit low. Deep breath. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway. Let's step the left foot back. Come into high lunge up on your fingertips or you can grab your blocks. Bend deeply and stretch the inner back side long and straight. Exhale, hug the belly in and drop your chest. Inhale, bend. Lengthen that inner back side. Exhale, belly up, drop the head. Two more. Inhale, bend. Exhale, hug up. Inhale, bend. Exhale, hug up. And then bend that front thigh. We'll come to simple twist. Take your left hand down. Inhale, reach the right arm up. Yes. Good. So as you reach the arm away, don't just reach it from the rotator cuff, right, the joint. Reach it away because you're finding that inner border of the scapula, the shoulder blade closest to the spine, and then you reach that part away. Mm -hmm. And the whole back can stretch. And then we're not overdoing the joints here. Deep inhale. As you exhale, hand down. Let's just step up to the front of the mat. Bring your left foot up. Take your right foot back. Bring it all the way back. Nice long lunge and bend the front knee. Squeeze a little down through that heel. Hug the belly up. Straighten the front leg. Drop your chest. And 
and bend. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Bend the front side. Plant the right hand down. Open up to the ceiling with the left arm. Stack the wrists so there's an evenness through the back and the back, uh, the back body and the front body expanding apart. Yeah. That you're not overdoing one side or compensating. For most of us, it's going to be that front top shoulder that drops forward. So if your top shoulder head feels like it's sort of dropping forward, then see if you can take that top shoulder blade and pick it up a little bit more. Yes, and expand that front of the chest. Another breath. Inhale. Exhale, hand down. Let's take it to plank this time. Top of a push-up. Inhale, a breath. Exhale, lower, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, your cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog, one breath. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or float the feet up to the front of the mat. Inhale, lift the chest, look up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, come into chair, your Utkatasana. Up to stand, exhale, all the way up, palms to prayer. Bend the knees, come sit down, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Lift the chest, look up. Be sun salute. Exhale, step or float back, Chattaranga Dandasana. Inhale, cobra or your upward facing dog. Exhale, come back, downward facing. Right foot forward, Virabhadrasana one. One breath, rise up. Good, bend deeply as you lift out of the earth. Exhale, hands down, long breaths. So if you're a little more experienced, start to really link your breath with the movement and to really try one breath per movement. Yes. And then you let the breath lead a little bit. When you take your left foot, see if you can initiate the breath to bring it up. Plant that back heel. Reach the arms up. Exhale. There you go. So this is a way to control the ups and downs of the mind stuff. Here is a technique that's very effective. Mm -hmm. Place your entire focus on that inhale and how you move with it. And then your entire focus on the exhale and then how you move with it. And then you take your entire focus at the top of the breath when there's a little stationary moment where there's no breath and then at the bottom. And the more you pour your attention there, there you are in that Second Yoga Sutra. Look forward as you exhale. Step or float the feet up to the front of the mat. And you're in that practice. Look up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, Utkatasana. And come up to stand. Exhale, palms to prayer. Inhale, bend the knees, Utkatasana. That's it. Full focus. Down, forward, fold. Inhale, lift the chest. Look up. Exhale, step or float back. We're good. That's you. So that's your only job right now. What a relief. Up dog. Exhale, down dog. Right foot forward. Warrior one. One breath. Rise up. Exhale, take it down. Right? Your only job is that job of awakening. Urdhva Mukashvanasana. Adho Mukashvanasana. Left foot forward. Warrior one, one breath, rise up, belly in, take it from the core as you come up. Chaturanga Dandasana. Yeah. Yeah. So all of us that do this practice that we're doing right now, for most, a lot of us, we're all a little type A personalities, right? I mean, that's a, that's, not a standard poll, I'm just taking a guess. That's because our minds are busy, 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 right? And this movement that we do in the vinyasa yoga practice captures it for a moment. Yeah. And then we can start to take that and rein it in. Look forward as you exhale. Step or float the feet up to the front of the mat. Inhale, lift the chest. Look up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Utkatasana. 
Come up to stand all the way up, arms up, palms to prayer. Bend the knees, Utkatasana, sit low, right? Capture your mind through your breath. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift the chest, look up. Exhale, step or float back. That's it, elbows back, Chaturanga Dandasana. So slow it down, but take that one breath per movement, right foot forward, warrior one. So you start to lengthen the breath now. Yes. So yes, there's no stopping, but there's real flow. Guided flow. Left side. Relax your jaw. Aha. So I'm going to invite you today to do either one more or rest in child's pose. So after your three breaths in your down dog, you'll come to the front of the mat and take another Surya Namaskar B. Otherwise, you rest. Or you can do a little, little variation. Maybe you don't do all the Chaturangas. Wrist. Mm-hmm. On both. Still from handstand on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They haven't adapted yet. No, no yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. been six or seven months. <laughs> Lovely. So when you come to the end of this, let's we'll all go to child's pose. Why don't you come to the end of this Surya Namaskar B. And you'll just get really deeply into your Ujjaya Pranayama. Making the back ribs move, fill up. Yeah, get full. Get full of breath for a couple more. So I told my, talking to my daughter this morning about this Yoga Sutra. Yoga is the controlling of the ups and downs of your mind. And we both agreed that was real X-Men stuff, right? You want to be a real X-Men? Control the ups and downs of your mind stuff. In those movies, they had incredible powers, but they were really unhappy. <laughs> What's the point of being able to fly if you're miserable and complaining about it in your head? Oh, look at this weather. These birds are getting in my way. <laughs> I wish I could go faster. Can you imagine if you could fly, there'll be plenty of other things to complain about. Reach the arms forward and press out through the fingertips, straighten the elbows, come up, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. And all the things that we desire, if they came right now and we didn't control the mind, we'd be complaining about them. <laughs> Lift the right leg up, inhale, open up the hip. Just stack it for a moment, let it feel good. If you want to circle the ankle and circle the knee, take three breaths here. Yeah. Good, press out and down into your fingertips. Take the knee to the nose as you exhale, hug in, plank. And take the knee back, inhale, leg back up, one-legged. Exhale, come to plank, hug in. Again, inhale, take the leg back and up. Two more, exhale, hug in, knee to the nose. Inhale, take it back up. One more time, knee to the nose and hover. Press the floor away. Now, try and protract your shoulder blades more here. So push the, the floor away and separate them further apart. There you go. It'll help keep your knee up longer. Step it through, come to warrior two. So bring it up, nice work. Bring it all the way up around to the side. Good, stretch out the arms. Bend a little deeper, press through the back foot. Raise a little of the lift in the pubic, the pubic area, so just above the pubic bone. Can you lift that a little bit more? Relax your face, good. Now let's see if we can just be here right now. Not with having to 
figure anything out. All is well. Bend a little deeper. Reverse the posture, right arm up. Exhale, take the arms down. Good, Chaturanga Dandasana. So as you move through and transition for a moment, once you get into your down dog, just perhaps have a moment of witnessing of how much the mind went automatically into waiting for something to happen, change, shift, wanting something else to be. Now it could be very habitual and unconscious. Left leg, lift it up, open up the hip. So the witnessing starts now. And then circle your knee if you want to with that open leg or the ankle. Yeah, a couple of breaths. Find some mobility in the hip, the knee, and the foot. Nice. Good. And then stretch the leg straight as you can. Square your hip off. As you exhale, take your knee to the nose and come forward to plank and hug in. Inhale, send it straight back. Exhale, knee to the nose and hug in. Send it back. You want a little bit more work? Stay in plank. Exhale, knee to the nose and hug in. Send it back. Last one. Knee to the nose, hug in. Hover here. Push the floor away. Yes, and protract those shoulder blades even further apart. You'll get higher. And then on your next exhale, step up, warrior two. Take that front foot. Bring it all the way up around. Open up the arms. Relax your jaw. Bend that front thigh. Spread out the bottom of your foot. Push the weight into the heel and then straighten the right leg. Straighten the right leg, that's it. Good. Keep the face soft. Just a little here. There you go, that's it, beautiful. Yeah. And then just watch the mind witnessing and focus it in on the breath over and over again. One more breath, bend deeper, reverse, nice, exhale, arms down, take it through, Chaturanga Dandasana, no rush, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, exhale, your Adho Mukha Svanasana, soften the face, three breaths. Step your right foot forward after your third breath. Uttita Trikanasana. You can come right into the posture right here. You can take a block on the outside edge. Hug your outer right buttock down. Squeeze triangle pose. Squeeze that right thigh. Yeah. Get your bottom arm straight. So it has to be straight and either on a block or on the floor. And then exhale as you take the left arm up. Take your left shoulder blade and draw it up away from the middle of your spine. Keep drawing the, the trapezius muscle, though, away from the ear. Yeah. That's it. Good. So we make a, a real flatness along the upper back. Yes. You keep moving that apart. Good. Now just feel your quadricep muscle. Squeeze it. Let that go just a little. There you go. Push here. Make this work more than your calf. Mm -hmm. Inhale, take the hand to the hip, look down, bend the front knee, Ardha Chandrasana. Walk forward, fingertips out. Inhale, reach your left leg up. Lift the inner thigh. Okay, now, as you take the left leg up, wrap the quadricep muscle. In fact, wrap all of the muscles around the upper leg in and up. A tight cuff there. Inhale. 
Now, perhaps a little more balance. You could either take that bottom hand off the floor and bring it to prayer in the heart. You could take your left arm up behind you and grab hold of the foot. Yeah. You just test a little of your skill in this balance. Another breath. Good. So we're going to go low. So release your top leg. Go low to the ground as low as you possibly can before you put the foot down. Before you put the foot down, then inhale, warrior two, up we come. One breath in, warrior two, exhale, reach out. Take your hand down on the block, on the outside edge of your front foot for full Uttita Parj Mukhanasana. Go pretty wide with your legs, push into that right heel. Stretch the arms apart, take a breath there. And just feel your legs. Do you feel like you can get an even pressure down through both legs? If it's just all in the right heel, take a moment and, and reinvigorate your back leg. Right? Bring it into the party. Yeah, don't let it be outside. Draw your outer right knee back, like you're hugging that back in. That, yes, now take your top arm over your ear. Exhale. So we are talking about adaptation earlier. I was that... It, that if you miss a process because it's easier to do it another way, but you kind of know you're cheating out and skipping over a corner, then you'll never have that six or seven months to adapt where you no longer have to do that, right? So remember, that's part of the witnessing of what the mind does in the process of yoga. Another breath. Come up, press down, warrior two. One breath in, inhale. Exhale, take the hands down, either rest. You can go to down dog or your chattarangarandasana. Urdhva mukha svanasana. Exhale, adho mukha. Good, let's all make some noise. Ha! Yeah! Ha 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 ha. And not everything takes six or seven months, I promise. That's full adaptation. Left foot forward. Come up, Utita Trikanasana. So you can come all the way up to stand or you can place that block on the outside edge. Reach the arms up. I know some of you are already seeing some progress just with some of the shoulder work we've been doing over the past couple of months. You know, yeah, separate those shoulder blades apart. Open them up. Yeah. So if I've ever told you you're hyperextending, <laughs> go in, right, release a little bit of the knee. Squeeze up the quadricep muscle instead. Don't let that knee joint try and take all of the straightening for you. Good, and that's it. There we go. Engage the thigh. Inhale. Exhale, hand to your hip. Look down at your front knee. Bend forward. Walk your fingertips forward. Inhale. Whenever you're ready, reach the right leg up. Ardha Chandrasana. Right leg, up it goes. Okay, so once you've got your balance, put a tiny little bend in your standing leg and then re-straighten it by hugging up all around the top of the thigh. Like it's like one of those pressure cuffs, right? Yes. And then once you have that, lift your inner thigh a little higher. And then if you've got that, you can use this to Test your balance. Perhaps take your left hand up to your heart. Maybe grab your right foot. I've got you. Grab your right foot with your hand, perhaps. Let's see. No, we're going to stay here. You're going to stay with me. Arm up. Yes, we're going to open you up. There you go. That's the posture. One more inhale. Now, before you go to warrior two, get as low to the ground as you can on one leg. Low, 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 low down. You're going to bend and really bend and really bend, and then you're going to step back all ninja-like and come to warrior two. There you go. <laughs> Inhale a breath. Exhale, go forward. Utita Parjvakanasana. Take your hand down on the outside edge of your front foot. Take your right arm up to the ceiling. Release it up. Exhale, take your top arm. When you've got some space between the shoulder blades over the air, and feel your feet, feel your legs. Put more weight in your back leg. Press back, and then draw your outer left thigh back into your hip socket. There you go. That's it. 
Hold that steady. Good, and that underside of the leg. Hold there. Mm -hmm. That's it. Breathe. Beautiful. Another breath. Press into your back foot. Inhale. Come up, warrior two. Reach up. Hold steady. As you exhale, take the hands down. Chaturanga Dandasana. Yes. Slow steadiness here. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Beautiful. You're going to come to your down dog. Three breaths in your down dog. And then from here, just drop your knees for a moment. We're going to come to full Vajrasana. So you will need a, a blanket for this. So how we do this is that we take our knees together. We're going to make sure your belt is handy near you. Take your knees together. Take the blanket so it's just flat on the ground near your toes. I'll turn around so you can see. Okay. It's right there, just kind of up by your toes. Lean forward, perhaps put your head on the ground. Push your heels so they're completely together. Crawl the blanket up and then burrito wrap them so that your meat stays in your tortilla. The tortilla is your, I don't know why Mexican food is always such a good way to describe yoga poses. Sometimes Italian. For some reason, Mexican food is good. <laughs> so it's the burrito wrap. So now you're going to get, yeah, you really wrap it in. Right. I'm not always good at that with real food. All this stuff falls out. I'm good with it with yoga. <laughs> yeah. So you sit on it, right? Yes. Good. So it keeps those, uh, those feet together. Hmm. A little scar tissue, maybe? It's, oh, it's a, it's a little bit of the, right, the bunions. Yeah, a little bit of that. Okay, good, we're here. Okay, pick up your belt. Pick up your belt. I don't know why I keep collecting blankets either. <laughs> Just keep getting blankets for myself. No reason for that. So if you really feel the top of your feet are sensitive too, right, you can come up and put another blanket so your top of your feet are sitting on something if you have sensitive. We're going to take our, we're going to shoulder floss for a moment. Take our belts wide. Put the belt between your thumb and your first finger and push your, um, your fingers away. So there's a tendency when you go overhead to sickle the fingers in towards each other like that. Right? And you're going to try and avoid that. You're going to take that belly in. Remember how we did this before without kind of leaning everything forward. And then take it over the head. Pull the belly in and push out through those thumbs and bring the belt behind. Okay, good. So try and get upright. Do this as upright as possible and bring it over and to the front. Right. Flossing, right? Yeah. So tissue that doesn't move, yeah, gets... Um, very thick. Part of the reason that this is not great, obviously, is that we lose mobility. You keep going, but back and forth. But if you have a piece of tissue that's really thick somewhere, and then other pieces of tissue that are not as thick, it, um, that thick piece of tissue actually is not a strength at all, because it it can pull the other tissue into places where it's really unsafe, right? All those softer tissues then get pulled down by the thicker tissue. And that's when injuries happen. So it's actually not the thick tissue itself that's an injury. It's when you pull out and that thick tissue pulls the overstretches, the softer tissue. And that's when we get tears. Yeah. So if we kind of never moved, we'd probably never get an injury. But at some point, right, 
You're going to reach for, that's when you, know, you reach for something. It's why people go down and go, I don't know, I just bent down to pick up something. It's because that harder tissue finally pulled some of the softer tissue in a way that strained it or you got a, you know, a spasm or a pull of the, um, the disc. Yeah, good. Two more. So again, right, adapting takes a little while. It doesn't happen right away. But I bet it feels better already or easier, does it? Yes. So it's good to tell a little story as you're doing that. OK, put it to one side. And exhale. Take this off. You're just going to feel your ankles out for a moment. Please pick them up behind you, your feet, and do big circles. Big circles. If you've ever rolled your ankle, there's probably going to be one ankle there that felt stiffer than the other. Roll your ankles the other way. That's it. Nice big circles. Good. And then hands out in front. And let's go back to downward facing dog. And put some space there now in your arms, in your armpits, through the back of the legs, down through the feet. Spread the feet. Spread out through the heels. And take that heel as far down as you can. And the tailbone up. So take those two opposing actions here. Heel down, underside of the buttock, and mid hamstring up. Yeah. Take your right foot forward, come to crescent pose. Exhale, arms up. Good, so regular crescent, back heel off the ground, arms alongside your ears. Draw a little more inner thigh length from here. And then take your arms forward, just straight forward. So keep your back leg straight here. And then like you're taking a, a bowling ball and you're drawing it into your belly. We'll retract in the navel. Exhale. Pull in. And keep the back leg straight. And draw the tailbone down and the buttock forward. And then inhale. Open up a little bit to space. Open up the arms. And exhale like we've got a big bowling ball and we're pulling in. Pull the belly in and then try and straighten the back leg. And inhale, open to space. And again, exhale, pull in. Inhale, open to space. Inhale, reach the arms up. Let's twist. Bring your left elbow on the outside edge of that right thigh. Find your twist here and keep that back thigh really stable. <sighs> Press into that back leg, open the chest. Four more breaths. Easy, steady flow. Good. One more breath. So if you feel like you can push down, come to crescent pose from here. Drop your arms. Bring the arms up. One breath. Inhale. Exhale, take it back and through. Chaturanga Dandasana. Exhale. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Step your left foot forward. Come to crescent pose. Three breaths in your steady crescent. Push the weight into your heels. Draw that weight down. Hug up through the, the buttock. Yeah, and arms right alongside your ears. Now get the back inner thigh long. Reach it back. And then take the arm straight out in front. So we're going to grab our bowling ball, but back leg straight. Exhale. Hug in. Pull it into the navel. So you're going to try and make room. So we've got to put a little hollowness in there. And then inhale, open to space. Exhale. Back leg straight. Inhale. Again. Inhale, arms up, let's twist, exhale, right elbow, bring it on the outside edge of that left thigh. Mm -hmm. Good. Widen through the chest, keep your face super soft, extend the spine forward, three more breaths. Beautiful, such nice focus. Finding that ups and downs of the mind stuff, just holding you steady in this place. 
One more breath. Press down through the feet. Can you lift perhaps? Crescent pose, rise up. Exhale, hands down. Chaturanga Dandasana. Make your way back and through. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. No rush. Exhale, come back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward to plank pose. Okay, hold steady in plank. Really engage the thighs. So this time when you come to chaturanga, I want you to focus on the moving forward element of chaturanga. So as you come down, keep trying to pull yourself further and further and further past your fingertips to the front of the room. Then come to upward facing dog. And keep that action where you're trying to draw your palms back and draw those outer arms through the chest, through and the outer arms back. Exhale, hug the belly in, downward facing dog. As you inhale a breath, let's take the hands back to the feet. As you come towards the back of the mat, just take the top of the hands to the floor out in front of you. Take the top of the hands to the floor, yeah, out in front. You just put a little, yeah, a little weight on there. Let's stretch those wrists again. Maybe you get to, some of you can, most of you can straighten the legs here. Yes. That's it. How are they doing? Oh, solid as a rock. <laughs> Good. And then inhale, lift the chest. Take your hands to your hips. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Beautiful. Stay there for a moment. We will, uh, we're going to keep the mats where they are. We're going to do a couple of variations. So regular handstand at the wall, hands down, draw the belly in. You can use the wall or not, right? Come on up. We will use the wall for the second or third one for some of you. You'll come quite a bit away. And then we'll use it to come up, take the feet to the wall, take the toes to the wall here, right? And then we're going to use that sort of um, chaturanga feeling in the chest, like we're trying to go forward and through and really firm the buttocks, right? Forward and through and then really firm the buttocks and see if you can get yourself off the wall and start to bring your head up. You don't have to take your feet off the wall. At some point, you'll be able to balance and actually taking your feet off your wall will allow you to go through more. But you can keep your toes at the wall. Or do none of that and just walk up the wall for a moment, just for some arm strength, right, up backwards. You can do a little short down dog, you can walk your feet up the wall. So, lots of choices, which is sometimes not the greatest idea, but, <laughs> yeah, if you want some help, but you're all at different stages, which is great, right? Where you should be, you're exactly where you should be. So take a first, uh, upside down posture, right? Handstand, either coming to the wall and kicking up or turning around and walking up the wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Beautiful. Yeah. Good. Like, yeah, exactly. Right in there. Mm-hmm. Belly in. Press down through your fingertips. Now, if you are coming at some point through to the scorpion, you probably have to be further away from the wall than you think. The best thing to do is don't judge the distance when you're standing up, because then that looks very far away. It's to go into downward facing dog at the wall and then walk back from there. Right. Then you can try that. And that, I mean, I'm not even that far away right now. Right. And then take that chest through the arms. Further back than you think, because your legs are long, right? You're going to hit the wall really easily. If you think about, I don't know, are your legs 
Your legs are longer than your arms. So if you don't even get from your fingers to where your elbows are, and then come back one handprint from there, you're easily going to get to the wall. Yes, good. Stay there. Tippy toes to the wall. Beautiful. Stay there. And then, keeping that there, hug your booty in a lot. Yes. And take your chest through like you're trying to go to Chaturanga towards the baseboard. Ah. That's the action. That's all you got to do. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that'll keep everything safe. Keep your lower back safe. And you'll just slowly open that thoracic spine in that straight arm position. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to make sure you're going to firm your buttocks. So try one more. Those of you that are at the wall want to come up. I'm going to use my other leg for a moment because I just used my... Whoa. That's not good. Okay. Yeah, those of you that are, um, in, if you, when you get to the floor, please, Varasana and Supta Varasana. Yeah. Make sure you have um, two blocks, which I think I got everybody blocks who didn't have them. Make sure you have two blocks at your mat. So start with Varasana, knees together, feet apart, sit up on a blanket or not, but make sure your buttocks are on something. And when, when you get here, no rush, you're just gonna give yourself a little forearm and wrist massage, like you're um, kind of milking from the knee out through the fingertips. It's like an udder. It's a good, Imagery, milk those fingers from the elbow all the way out and then do the other side, yeah. Run the fluid through the wrist, which again can be very sticky. There we go. If you want to recline and you are sitting on something, you have to take that thing out from underneath you and put it closer to your upper back so that you can lengthen your tailbone. So a little cue here for those of you that, and I'm the same way, really tight. I have tight quadriceps. I have tight um, psoas muscle. When I go back, I find it easy if I really firm up the buttock, I can get more of that posterior tilt I can get stuck in that anterior tilt, right? If you firm the buttock, your frontal hip bones will rise up. You'll get more of a lift. You'll find it easier to go back. Yeah, so feet a little wider apart. So make sure they're on the outside edges of your hip. Keep coming, my love, keep coming. Mm -hmm. I know they're stuck. Okay, you might want to come up. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's it. There you go. All right. Yes, where? If it's too much, we put a blanket. If it's like, yeah, like we can, we, yeah. Again, it's that adaptation, they're not quite. Okay, there you go. And try it from there. Yeah, good. good. So just about five more breaths here, either reclining or sitting upright. Your feet have to be on the outside edges of your buttock. You know that, right? Feet, outside edges, yeah. They're not on the outside edges right now, but bring them on the outside edges. All the way out, all the way out, keep going. Yes, there you go. All right, I'm gonna put two bolsters behind you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I may need four. <laughs> yeah, good job. One more breath. If you're, if you're lay, uh, lying down, take your arms up over your head and, Lock your elbows together for a moment and lift the back ribs up. 
Big inhale and exhale. Good. One more breath. Big inhale. Nice. Exhale. Mm -hmm. Cross the elbows the other way. Hang on to the elbows. Lift the back ribs up off the waist. Big inhale. Big exhale. Keep firming the buttocks. Keep your back safe. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Okay, release the arms. Press your elbows into the ground and come up that way. All the way up. Come forward. Hands and knees. Straighten your legs. Downward facing dog. through those fingertips into the earth. Good. Lovely. Okay, so uh, you're gonna have to move anything that's on the middle of your mat is you're gonna take your feet a little closer together and come forward to plank. Let's come all the way down to the ground as you exhale, exhale. Grab your belt, get your feet together. Aha. Take a long line of the belt again. Okay. So you take it out in front. Same thing with the hands. Head down. Really push out through the, the wrists and push out through the thumbs. All right, with the belt out in front of you. And then you're going to take your head down and bring it over your head and then behind. But try and keep your body steady. So push your buttocks down as you do this. Now there's sort of a point, can you feel when you get to the ground, there's a point where there's a lot of unsteadiness. As the belt goes over your head towards the ground and it comes off the ground and over the head. Just try and control that a little more. Keep your arms, your triceps engaged. Just two more. One more. Exhale. Beautiful. Put your belt to one side. Press up. Come to your hands and knees. Grab your blocks. I'm trying these groovy new three minute egg blocks. Now, must egg. I don't know yet. Apparently, it's because your body's not square. That's what they say. Because <laughs> your body's, because you're not very. What I like about them is because for some of you, um, the the thickness is a little less than the uh, these wooden uh, uh, cork blocks. So that if you want to go down lower but still need a block, this would be kind of the next level down. So you could try. So um, let's take. Try. <laughs> We're gonna take your right foot forward. We're going to have, use our blocks. Okay. Tuck your back toes under. Okay. So start to come towards Hanuman with your hip and your back knee off the ground. The hips and the back knee off the ground, which is why we've got our blocks. So we can go up a little high on our blocks, flex your front foot, stretch out through the ankle, put the blocks beside your hips for a moment, and come up this way, right with the hips off the ground. So we're gonna work all those pieces back, the abdominal wall back, the outer arms back if you can, and the chest up, right? That's where we're going. So you can get the blocks as high as you need to to do that. Then drop the back knee to the ground, but still keep this intention of the outer left thigh coming forward. Now, if the abdominal wall is not engaged, we fall forward out of this posture, and we lose the, the um, stronger extension of the back leg. So keep your abdominal wall back and intact, and take the top of the back foot to the ground now, and see if you can relax a little bit more of the pelvic floor to perhaps go down a little lower. Keep firming and pushing out through your Achilles, the tendons and the ankle here. Lift the chest. Rotate the outer left thigh forward. Good. Just a breath. Inhale. Exhale. Draw up. Come on your knees. And pray. No. Take a breath. <laughs> 
Yeah, pray, pray only have one leg. Oh, I have two. Left foot forward. So we'll, we'll, go, we'll go high, right? Up with the hips, back toes tucked under. It's always good to have the heel on the wood rather than your sticky mat. It's a little easier. Let's keep the, let's get ourselves up high here. Knee off the ground, hip off the ground. Lift the chest. Yeah, so we do have to put some weight in the shoulders. Draw your, your abdominal wall in, rotate the outer right thigh forward. Stretch the ankle out. Inhale. Drop the knee to the ground. Now, keep the back toes tucked under. Rotate the outer right thigh forward. Then take the top of the foot behind you on the ground. Perhaps walk the blocks back a little bit more. Firm the thigh muscle. Relax your jaw. Inhale, take a breath, exhale. And then press into your blocks, come on up, good. Put your blocks to one side. Let's cross the shins and come onto our back. So come all the way down onto your back. Take, bend your knees, take your feet to the ground. Let's come to bridge pose. Press down through the heels. As you inhale, firm the buttocks up a lot. Hollow out your navel. You can either interlace your fingers underneath you or you can take your belt and grab hold of it like we've been doing, like monkey bar grip on top. And if you get that monkey bar grip on top of your belt, then you have to turn your thumbs outward until your, your fingernails face the ceiling. Otherwise, you can interlace those fingers. Form a fist. Push down more through your outer shoulders. And stay steady. How are your feet? Have they gone for a little walk on to the outside edges of your mat, that means turn the toes in now, parallel the feet, yeah. Use that breath now, inhale. Exhale, good. Just a little more turn in of the feet, heels out, good. If you've got any pain going on in your lower back, the next stage would be see if you need to block between the knees. That'll hold the knees steady and turn off the external rotators. Firm your buttock, one more breath, inhale. Exhale, take your hips down and breathe on your back. Good. So the thoracic spine, the place, the upper thoracic between the shoulder blades and that area of the spine is the stiffest on most humans now, right now in the Western world. There's very little extension in there. And yoga brings it back. Arms alongside your ears, otherwise Urdhva Dhanurasana um, or back to your bridge. When you're ready, inhale, come on up again. Lift the chest. Yeah, good. Parallel the feet wherever you are. Draw the weight into the heels. Yeah, so we're going to see if we can stay steady where you are in whatever back bend for three more breaths. One, straighten the arms if you're in your Urdhva Dhanurasana. Two, good. Straighten the arms, hug the triceps in. And three, chin in, come on down. Just rest on your back. Don't hug your knees into your chest. Good. Okay. Roll to one side. Come up to sit. Take your right shin forward and your left leg back for pigeon. But we're not going down quite yet. You're going to take the belt. It should have a little loop in it or create a little loop, and you're going to loop your back ankle or your back foot. Right. Yeah, back foot, like this. Just there, on the foot. There you go. And then you're going to take that belt, and you're going to just place it on your, over your shoulder. And put your back leg down, though, for a moment. Yes. Now, here's where blocks can come in handy because... There's a lot of similarity now to the split pose in the back leg, the Hanuman. We did the same. So if you have it difficult coming upright, get your blocks with the belt over your head 
and place your hands on your blocks and try and find the same pelvis as we just did for Hanuman. Same pelvis, go upright, draw the frontal hip. We're trying to get neutral, it's not gonna ever be completely neutral. It'll always be, it'll be a little anterior tilted, but you can get uh, almost neutral here in this posture. If you can work your, the, um, uh, the obliques in, the transverse abdominis, and you can get that extension in the spine, yes. Now, you may not, if you don't have your hips relatively down, and we, I can always prop you, then it's probably you're not gonna wanna bend that knee because you're too far forward, right? You wanna try and get upright first. Work on getting upright first, or relatively upright. If you can get relatively upright, I'm gonna move this actually. I'm gonna put it somewhere else, see if it's more useful. Yes, you see now you can kind of sit the hips down, right? Because you can always prop then, get the pelvis upright, then bend the knee, use your belt and gather up the leg towards your head. Yeah. Now take a breath on that kind of first place where it kind of stops you. Don't go deeper right now. And I want you to feel what you need to adjust. Lift the pelvis more. Rotate the outer side of your back leg towards the ground. Bring heaviness there, good. Now, that's gonna show you a little deficit, right? And you have to pull the navel in again. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. And then just take three more breaths. I think you're good, right? Yeah. This is good. Good. Another breath. Good, okay. So then try and get your tailbone down a little bit more and your frontal hip bones up. Now, that's the next kind of area where you can expand in this posture. This, the reason you're falling over is because this part is coming off the ground and you can roll now more onto this outer, yes. Let that come forward, there you go. Good, okay. So now you just stay there and see if you can work your abdominal wall in and your frontal hip bones up. Okay. Yeah. Let's switch sides. Release your belt, come around, other side. Yeah. Now I know there's ways that you can kind of cheat out, fall to one side, do a funny you know, thing with your back leg. But if we do that every time we come into this posture, then we'll never, it'll never change, it'll never shift. It is literally like having the same thought over and over again and wondering why we're still suffering, right? I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. Why am I so unhappy? I'm not worthy, I am not, why am I depressed? I am not worthy, I am not worthy, right? And we're so used to these paths that are well trod. So that happens in the mind and then we figure out how it happens in the body. The body proves to us that it's happening. It's going like, we do the same over here, right? With our hips and with our tailbone. Let's pull back a little bit and look for a moment at that path well trod. And maybe we wanna make an adjustment, which means that we have to slow down and take a couple of steps back. A couple of steps back, yeah. And be okay, right? Yeah. Right. So the blocks are good for taking the hands and bringing them as far beside the hips as you can. You can use both. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's it, that's it. And just look straight forward and then work the abdominal wall in. And so for most of us, the, one of the most difficult things is heaviness on the right hip now. So roll the right hip and the right side down, but it will help heal the SI joint here. It'll show how much extension you've got left to go in the back leg, that's it. Okay, this is good. So you can do this. Now, your thing now is to draw the abdominal wall strongly back and hold it in and back. And a little bit of the firmness of your buttock down will also help that. Yes, there you go. Good, another three breaths. So instead of bending here, we're actually not gonna do that. You're gonna take your hands on the blocks. You're gonna lift this up. I'm gonna put this in the correct position. Keep the top of the foot on the ground now. 
Yes. And just walk your hands as far back as you can with the blocks. Right there. Yeah, there you go. Good. Yeah, that's good. All right, my loves. Inhale to breath. Exhale, release out of this. Come on around. Take your shins to the front. And let's come forward fold from here. So, a couple of choices. You can take your right shin on top for double pigeon. You can place your head on the ground or on something and come forward. If double pigeon, your knee is way off the ground, try bringing your right shin forward and just crossing the shins into a, a, a true sukhasana, right, where they really cross out in front of you in the middle of the shin and then come forward from there. Yeah. But if you do come to sukhasana, bring the feet out from away from the hips. Don't tuck the t feet underneath you, right? To progress, you want to try and get those feet further out away from the hips, right? So it's either that or you stack. The next stage is to stack your shin on top of your shin. Yes. There you go. Mm -hmm. And reach out. Exhale. And then put a flex on that top foot to protect your knee. And release forward. Drop your head down. If it's relatively close to the ground, place a block underneath your forehead. And breathe here. Let it go. Take three more breaths and have your exhales be a little longer now. And after your third really long exhale, switch your sides. Take a moment to set up. You've created a lot of space in those hips and the shoulders today. Now you want the body to start to let go of the tension, the holding, the gripping. So again, try not to miss a spot or run over a piece of release in the body that might need an extra few breaths to help it to let go. Those next couple of exhales really long. And then unwind up for the last.
last posture, Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. Bring your buttock flesh out. Roll your inner thighs down. Dandasana, and then arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, Dandasana. Draw the weight of the thigh bone into the earth. Exhale, reach out. Find your feet or your belt. Lift away from the legs. And then lift the buttock flesh up. Weight down the legs again. Exhale, elbows out to the side. So as you come over and you breathe here, you're going to notice where the most sensation is, where the most pulling, right? There's probably a tugging feeling somewhere happening for some of you who are relatively close to the legs. Redirect that pulling feeling. If it's in the middle of your back or in your lower back, you don't want that intensely there, right? Take it down and bring it to the top part of your buttock, which is really strong muscle and fascia that we actually want to stretch there. And then the length comes evenly through the spine and not just in one place. It might mean you have to lift up a little bit and back off. Inhale, lift the chest. Reach the arms forward. Come all the way up. Lift, lift, lift. Arms down, beautiful, come lay down, Shavasana. Find yourself on your back, corpse pose. Maybe place something underneath your knees. There's plenty of blankets around for a little extra support for your hips or your lower back. You can roll it up and just put it underneath your knees, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And as you lay down, take your hands and just tuck the tailbone forward. Bring it forward, and then press your shoulder blades up. Roll your inner arms out. We're in pure observation mode now as we rest. Yoga is the controlling of the ups and downs of your mind. So keep the mind steady. And instead, go into more an experiencing mode of just what being is, the energetic patterns of your body as they twirl around and show you the dance of your own life from the inside.
begin to deepen your breath. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And draw your knees into your chest. Roll to your right side. And press up to sit. Holding the mind steady again. <coughs> Watching if it wants to run out and bringing it back because you're still here in your body, in this room, on your mat. Plant yourself firmly. Oh. Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for listening to Fear Not, a blend of yoga and wisdom for awakening to the magic of the moment where fear does not exist. With me, Claire Hartley. Find me at clairehartleyyoga.com or at my studio, risinglotusyoga.com. Follow me on Facebook, Claire Hartley Yoga, or Twitter, at Claire Hart. Send me an email at claire at clairehartleyyoga.com and let me know what else you'd like to hear. Namaste. To receive your free copy of my booklet, Reboot Your Vitality, text the word Hartley to the number 22828 or go to my website and sign up.